Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'll show you how to use an unusual ingredient, which will give the dough a bright blue color. In fact, we will make two doughs and then add them together to create a swirl effect. The tea itself doesn't really taste of anything, so it's more for the visual impact. And of course, you can use the same method for adding different color swirls to your dough. And as always, you'll find all the details down in the description box with metric and imperial units. And also, I will add a link to where you can buy this tea, if you are interested. It's supposedly quite good for you, so we sometimes drink it at home. I don't just use it for bread baking. Okay, so let's have a look at what equipment we need. So because we need to make two doughs, I need two bowls. Scales, scraper, a razor blade, temperature probe, and a bread basket. Use a cast iron pot with a lid for baking, for best results. If you don't have one, bake your bread on a tray. But if you are really into baking, you should get one of these pots for yourself. When it comes to ingredients, we need two of each. Two lots of flour, two lots of salt, two lots of liquid, water and the tea. And you need a nice and happy sourdough starter. And if you don't have a sourdough starter yet and would like to learn how to make one, click the link in the top right corner where I have a full guide on that. So the first step on making this bread is to make the tea. So as I mentioned before, it's called butterfly pea flour tea. It's made out of butterfly pea flowers. So all we need to do is add some boiling water, give it a good old mix, and then we'll let it steep for around 10 minutes or so. And once it's finished steeping, we have to strain off the required amount, but do press the tea out with a spoon, it will give it more intense color. And you'll find all the weights and measurements down in the description box, like I said earlier. And once the tea is done, we can build the leaven. Now my kitchen is quite warm, so I'm going to use water that is around 19 to 20 degrees Celsius. And to build the leaven, just add your water to a bowl, add a little bit of your sourdough starter, give it a bit of a mix, and then add the flour. I am pre-fermenting a quarter of the total flour in this recipe. And of course you can adjust it in the way that you prefer. I am making it at a 1 to 10 to 10 ratio. So it's 8 grams starter, 80 grams water, 80 grams flour. And my leaven takes around 12 to 16 hours to be ready for use. Leave it to ferment overnight normally. Should at least triple in size. So it's the next day, get both your bowls, add your tea and your water. And again, the liquid that I'm using is 20 degrees Celsius. Then add the salt, then grab the leaven and weigh out 80 grams in each bowl. I know that we have 88 grams of leaven, but it's near impossible to scrape all the leaven out of the jar. So that's why, to try and keep the doughs equal, weigh out 80 grams in each. And then give it a quick mix. The leaven seems nice and strong. It's nice and bubbly, it floats, and it keeps in one piece. And now we can add the flour. And then grab your scraper. First, mix the white one, because then it, it won't transfer any color. And then mix the blue one. Just mix your dough until you don't see any more dry flour and give it a quick knead with your hand in the bowl. And once you're happy with that, you can tip them both out on the table we can start properly working them. Now this dough is quite stretchy and sticky, so you can use the stretch and fold method for kneading it. So, for best results, pick the dough up by one side, stretch it against the table, fold it over itself. And always pick it up by the side and fold it forwards. This dough will not take very long to knead. So we don't want to fully knead the dough right away. Knead the first dough for around 3 minutes and then collect it up into a bowl and continue on with the other dough. And then again work it for around 3 minutes, collect it up into a bowl and then continue on with the first one. We want to give the doughs the same attention so they come out the same way. This will also ensure that we have the same temperature because we need them to ferment at the same rate. So after the first kneading, I realized dough is not that sticky anymore, so I'm using a regular kneading method here. I'll continue kneading for around 4-5 to five minutes or so. And then do the same with the blue dough. And although we are making two lots of dough, it doesn't take that long. And all in all, about 15 minutes later, we're done. We can get these in a bowl, ready for bulk fermentation. Always take the temperature after mixing. And I did end up with half a degree difference, but it wasn't a big deal, still worked fine. The blue dough will ferment a little bit more rapidly, but that's cool. So now cover them up, 
we'll leave them ferment for two hours. And after the first two hours, we'll give the doughs a fold. Folding will achieve a couple of things in this dough. First, folding will degas the dough. Second, it will equalize the temperature and also increase the layers in the gluten structure and make the dough stronger. So to fold your dough, use your scraper to release it from the bowl. That will make it easier to handle. And then wet your hands to prevent them from sticking to the dough. And then lift the dough up, grabbing by the middle, release it from the bowl and roll it underneath itself. This is called a coil fold. And then turn and repeat on all sides until you have a nice tight ball. And once you've done the first one, give the second dough the same treatment. And if you want to learn more about folding, click the link in the top right corner, because I have a video on that too. And we'll give this dough a couple of folds during the bulk fermentation. So once they're all nicely folded up, you can cover them up and leave them to ferment for two more hours. The dough should really start rising during this time. And after the second proof, we'll give it another fold. It's important to note that every subsequent fold should be performed more gently than the previous one. As the dough is fermenting, bubbling up and filling up with gas, it gets more light and fragile, and we don't want to knock any of that fermentation gas out of it. And after the second fold, we'll leave it to proof for two more hours, so it's been six hours by now. And now, we'll fold it once more. We could actually call this the pre-shaping stage, because after this point, we'll relax the dough on the table and then we'll do the final shaping. We'll just call it a fold this time. So fold it the same way as you did before. And now, just lightly dust it with flour and place it on your work surface. So it's ready for its final shaping. And after the final fold, we need to cover the dough up again and leave it to rest for 30 minutes. During this time, the gluten will relax and it will make it a lot easier for us to shape. And 30 minutes later, we are ready for the final shaping. It's been six and a half hours by now, so you know, you gotta organize your day when you're making this bread. All right, so let's get on with the final shape. Dust your dough and dust your table with flour, but don't use too much. You don't want it to slide around. You wanna use just enough flour so the dough doesn't stick. But if you use too much flour, the dough will not stick to itself. And it's always better to do a light dusting and then add more later if needed. Right, so to shape the dough, place it smooth side down on your table and stretch it out. And it's up to you if you want to do the blue one on the bottom or the white one on the bottom. Stretch it out until it's about an inch thick. Then grab the other dough and do the same. Place it smooth side down on the table and stretch it out to more or less the same size. I do like to lift it up and use the weight of the dough to stretch it. And once you're happy with the size, just place one on top of the other. We'll use a stitching method for shaping this loaf, so watch my hands. Stretch the dough out a little bit more, then take the bottom, fold it up, and press it down a little bit, brush off any excess flour, then take one side, cross it over, and the other side over the first one. Then grab the top, fold it right down to the bottom. And now comes the stitching part, so just crisscross both the sides over each other. From the top right down to the bottom, if you feel like your hands are sticking, rub them against the table, cover them with flour, and then roll your dough up into a tight loaf. And that's it. This is a very good method for creating more layers and tension in your dough. Now we'll dust it with flour, rub it all over. You can also dust your basket. You will see later that my one stuck a little bit, but it wasn't the end of the world. Now pick the dough up and place it in a basket, smooth side pointing down. And now we can stitch up the seam at the bottom just to help it keep the tension. And then a final little dusting of flour, we can cover it up for its final proof. You could cold proof it in the fridge for up to 18 hours, and then bake it the next day straight from the fridge. But I'll do the same day bake today, so I'm proofing it for two hours out on the table. During the final hour of fermentation, preheat your oven to 240C, no fan, and also preheat your baking vessel. So two hours later, the dough is risen, it's nice and wobbly, we're ready to bake. So get your razor blade ready, get your hot pan out of the oven, and then slowly and carefully place the dough right into the middle of the pan. And if it sticks to the basket a little bit, like mine did here, just slowly and carefully release it. Then grab your razor blade and slash it from one end to the other. 
You want to slash it about an inch deep, so that's about two and a half centimeters. A cold dough will always be easier to slash than a warm one. But either way, once you finish slashing your dough, cover it up and get it in the oven for 20 minutes with the lid on. Then after the first 20 minutes of baking, you want to remove the lid. This is always my favorite part. You never know what's going to be under there. And now, get it back in the oven for 20 more minutes. And that's it, that's a blue, swirly whirly butterfly pea flour tea bread. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in the comments. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. I make bread baking videos twice a week. I'm on a mission to bake all the breads. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.